it's Sharon here welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time as you can see my my desk doesn't look quite the same as it usually does this is a piece of paper that I use to protect my table when I did some tea staining it was an earlier video so I'll see if I can pop the link for that video in the description in case anyone's interested and I've had it sitting in my workspace just folded up um, I'm thinking about trying to utilize this paper so this paper is a butcher's paper that I picked up from Kmart I think it's about five dollars a roll it's not very expensive um, this is the roll I've been using here so I still have a bit left on the roll and we use it in the house if we have Littlies who pop in to visit and they want to do some art and craft, they use it. And I also use it for this purpose here. So I've got a new series in mind and I thought I'd kickstart it today purely because... So one of the videos I have in mind, I've had in mind for a while and I was watching Rachel from Roxy Creations this morning. One of her... 100 day project videos and she was using rice paper and I don't actually have rice paper like the decorative rice paper here um, I think the one that she was using was a Stamperia rice paper and as I've said before I love Stamperia papers I would love to get my hands on some of the rice papers but it hasn't been a happening thing as yet and I was sitting <laughs> In envy watching her video thinking how much I would love to be able to use some and I remembered that I had purchased some rice paper so I had this it's a rice paper pad that I got from Riot Art here in Australia and there's just sheets of rice paper in there it's beautiful it's so fine and delicate and I, I I forgot I had it I used it in I think it was my last journal I did I use it for that I think I printed a an Artie Mays image onto it and it came out beautifully and I haven't touched it since so I've decided to have a little play and see what I can do with it. Now I did just notice on here and I haven't even looked at it. I prepped for the video and turned the camera on and it says ideal for use with ink, light watercolour or dry media which I didn't realise until now so that kind of works for what I have in mind. And I'm just going to tear a sheet out. And looking at this last one, I don't know if you can see there, it doesn't look like it tears out terribly neatly, so that's okay. And I really don't know how this will go, I've never done this before, so it's a mystery as to whether it will even work. Okay, so first of all, I have got some, so I'm going back to my tea staining. I've got my heat gun at the ready here. And I've just got a spray bottle with some tea in it. And I did squeeze the bottle a little too hard. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I was trying to cut the the spray bottle or the sprayer tubing inside and I was holding it against the bottle to get a gauge of the height I needed and I looked down and I'd squeezed the bottle. Whoops a day. Um, so I literally am just going to, there's that word again, I'm just going to spray this and I'm going to heat it with the heat gun. Now the paper has a shiny side and a more textured side so I'm using the textured side because I feel like it will take whatever we add to it better 
So we'll see how this goes. Fingers crossed, guys. And I'm going to give it a reasonable dousing. Making it reasonably wet. not even sure it may even pick up some of that orange from a previous session we'll wait and see so i'm about to turn the heat gun on it looks like it might be up there. so it has picked up some of that orange which is quite pretty It's a little bit damp in that corner, but showing you so you can see it's picked up some of the orange from my paper over here, and that was from my previous tea staining. So the tea staining is not color fast, and it just takes away. Let's see if I can show you against a new sheet. The colour is very subtle, so if I turn this around so that you can just see the part that's tea stained, you'll see it does give it a nice subtle tone, which is moving more towards the vintage colours that I like, so I'm quite happy with how that came out. I'm just going to set that to the side, and I'm going to get... Um, just some baking paper or parchment paper depending on where you live and what you call it so I'm just going to put this down to separate my rice paper from that tea stain from my previous session Another piece of paper. I should have mentioned, so these papers are 9 by 12 and there's 48, 48 sheets in a pack. I'm not sure if I mentioned, I think the pack was about $15 when I purchased it. I actually had a gift voucher, so I ended up getting a couple of them that I've had here for a while and I, I do forget that I've got them. I've only used them the once before. So quite good value for money actually. 48 sheets for $15. Okay, so now I have this separated from my previous paper underneath. And I'm going to spray this with just the tea stain again. I must admit I am a bit nervous about spraying things in my new space because I have carpet. It's it's not actually a craft space, it's a living space. So I have carpet and furniture and I'm a little bit worried about whatever I'm spraying traveling. So anyway, I guess I need to get over that fear if I'm going to be working here. So can see some colouring where it's actually sticking to the parchment paper. I don't know whether that will affect the way it dries, but I'm going to dry it now and see what we get. The colour is very subtle, but there is 
definitely it's a little bit damp underneath still actually I might just turn it over <coughs> excuse me so it does still feel a little bit damp but it's definitely picked up some of that paper that color sorry I don't know it's a little bit damp here I don't know whether it's possible to layer so I'm hoping that's showing okay I all I'm seeing on the screen is white on white on white so I might try one more to spray it with just the tea again okay I'm turning the heat gun on lifted from the parchment all the way around so do I have I have a blue here and I'm just going to spray it off to the side yep oh, that's really pretty okay I'm turning the gun on again that okay so I have a pink here and again I'll just spray to the side just want to make sure it's spraying okay yep and and then turn the heat gun on again That's so pretty. I hope you can see okay. And then I have a purple. Now with the purple I've noticed that the food colouring, the colours, because you use two, the colours tend to separate a little bit at times. So just giving it a really good shake. And I will put a little bit of purple on here as well. And I'm going to dry that off. Okay. So my, my rice paper is a little bit wrinkly. So I could probably pop that under the iron to press it if I wanted to flatten it out or I could leave it like that and get some texture it's still a bit damp here actually let's pop the heat gun on again that's better but yes yeah, subtle colours but quite pretty so I'll just set that to the side and just going to get some paper towel and wipe off this parchment paper. So the other thing with the pattern parchment paper is that they don't just have 
sorry I might just have to dry my butcher's paper over here for a moment okay so the other thing with the decorative rice paper is that they also have some sort of print on them so what I thought I might do is do some stamping so I'm going to use the stays on brown the journal I'm working on at the moment that's what I've been using and I haven't actually picked a stamp which was not really very good planning but and I'm going to use this one because it's got the orange and the orange doesn't work with what I'm working on at the moment. It doesn't matter so much if I mess it up if it doesn't work. So I'll try it on that one first. And so I'm kind of thinking you pretty much use any stamp to create a beautiful pattern. I'm just looking for something that will work with what I'm working on now. Okay, so I've got these two, which is the Windsor, Kaisercraft Windsor. And I've got the Pretty Butterflies and the Perfume. It has a perfume bottle. I'm not sure about the perfume bottle. I think I might stick to this one actually. Only because it's a, a young children's journal. And I do have some, it's called Flutter. Just some little butterflies. So I might use those. And I have a large stamping block. So. I need to work out, I got a little bit of ink on my block, I need to work out how I can get it off. Just move those out of the way. Seriously, sometimes. And maybe just a couple of butterflies. I'm thinking. I think he's too big. Can I move that across? We'll see how that goes. Excuse my belly, that's terrible. It's actually lunchtime and I decided that I was too keen to come and try this so I didn't stop to eat before I turned the camera. Maybe I should have. Okay. So I've overlapped those stamps. I'm not really sure how that will work but as I said, it's an experiment so... And I'm not necessarily looking for perfect images because, well, vintage, vintage shows ageing. So if it's not a perfect impression, I'm okay with that. But I would like to be able to see the image. So, okay, so I'm just... Not bad. It is very dark, so maybe I don't need that much ink. She 
pieces as she keeps dabbing. If I can get a secondary impression. See, I, I don't mind the secondary impression. It being a hint of the image rather than the complete image so I'm just I'm going to go lighter and I will get my stamp paper because I almost need a new one guys I think I do I think I do I think I do Okay, maybe we'll go without. I'll just use this bit. It's starting to get quite busy, I'm noticing. Okay, so I want to go a little bit more turn it. Oops. And I may even take a couple of the butterflies and fill in a little bit where they're missing. Okay, so I've learned from that that I prefer this lighter print down here as opposed to the very heavy print. I'll still use that, but that's really good to know. Okay, and so I'm going to have a play with these. Um, I'm just thinking I might cut them in half and do a half sheet. So my scissors. That way I can put some different patterns on them. Rather than have one whole sheet the same. I might be able to go that way. Hmm, let's do that. Will that be enough? No, I might go this way, I think. I'm just wondering what I'm going to use it for. So in case I want a longer orientation, I'll still stamp it this way, I think. Just in case. Again, trying not to go too heavy on my ink. And that has gone off the, the paper. I, I don't mind that. I actually did that intentionally. So I'm still airing on the heavier side, I think. I need to try and lighten it off. Perhaps in... I'm holding it there thinking I need to, but maybe I don't need to. That's better. Maybe that way. And I do have actually in this set there is one more butterfly that I haven't used so I might use that to fill in a little bit. And 
I probably should use block because just because really so I think I want to stamp on here before I stamp my butterfly. And maybe that's what I should have done with the others is stamp it off first. To give me a more subtle look although I do kind of like it. it's giving me a 3d effect stamp sheet's getting quite busy. Okay, I don't mind that. It's different. Okay, so that's one. And this one, I need to clean this stamp off. Where? Where, 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 where? I do need just a piece of tea stain paper. Just excuse me. Sorry about that. It's kind of what happens when I turn the camera on and don't organise properly first. Okay, I don't think that's too bad. And I'll just double check my little butterfly. Now that he cleaned up quite well. And I'm just grabbing a wet one. better than it was okay so I'll just take those off and set them aside and pop them away after I turn the camera off okay just having a sip of my cup of tea sorry about that guys and I'm, I'm really tempted to use this one that or do I want to do I was looking at this and I quite like this it's got a little fern or something in amongst the text I thought could be quite fun even the feather is fun maybe I could use feather I have a funny feeling this isn't going to go well Oh, so far so good. Yeah, about that. It's so hard to pull off when they haven't been off before. Okay, I really like that little birdie.
I'm steering between those three. Maybe I'll just make up my own pattern. And maybe I won't if I can't get it off. I think I'll just leave it at that. I really love the bird. Kind of needs to go on this side. This feather is going to be too big. A little bit random, but we'll give it a go. Okay. So this time I'm going to ink up and stamp on my stamping paper. Sorry if I'm off camera. And then do an impression on my rice paper. Most of these I haven't used before, so... I'm cute. Okay, so that didn't come out very well, and I'm wondering if that's because it's relatively new. The stamps are relatively new, haven't been used before. So, I'm going to do a quicker, quicker stamp. worked a little bit better so maybe I think I did that earlier I held it on the paper too long but that may have been on the rice paper that I did that so it seems the trick is to just do a quick stamp rather than I don't mind that it's sideways Well, that didn't quite go to plan. Quite like the butterfly. I'm just looking to see what I like on there. I quite like the butterfly and the feathers, I think. So I'm wondering. Which is an unusual combination, but can I get them closer together without being silly? Hmm. 
I really don't know whether this will look funny or not. I guess that's why they call it an experiment. So... I'm just going to do half of this. Because I have an idea for the other half that I'd like to try. So... And that won't be in this video, that will be in a future video. And that's quite pretty. Again, as I said, it's a rather unusual combination, but I guess it's suggestive that the birds are with the butterflies without actually showing the birds. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one there. I should show you, sorry. Not perfect impressions of the stamp, but I don't want it to be overly perfect. My stamp page, on the other hand, is very busy at the moment. And I think I might just try the bird on his own. Again, I'm just going to do half of this sheet. I think I prefer him on his own rather than with all of the other images. Oh, I'm just going to go to the back of this because I'm running out of options. And he's quite fun. So that's what I've ended up with there. I hope you can see okay in the video. Only very light impressions. As I said, I wanted it more muted. 
but you could do a darker impression this one here is a bit darker and that would be fine as well I hope you enjoyed this as I said it was purely an experiment I wanted to have a play so I decided to turn the camera on while I did that and I had a little bit of fun so thank you for joining me hello everybody I have just dried the tea stained rice paper and I ironed it with my iron to see if I could straighten it out a little bit it wasn't too bad but it was a little bit wrinkly so and it's pressed up quite well so I have here this is the tea stain piece and I don't know if you can see there's actually lines showing through it I'm not quite sure why that is but I thought that was really interesting and if I, I've got my paper pad here so I can pop it against the paper pad and you can see the difference in the color it's actually a lot more subtle than I expected it to be and I really really love it so really happy with the way that came out and then I have here also the other pieces that we did with the tea stain and I'll just pop those on the table and show you so this is one that we stamped and I really love it. So these pieces are probably about A5. They might be a little bit smaller than A5. And then this is the bigger piece. Let's see if I can zoom you out a little bit. Sorry about my finger getting in the way. So I'm hoping that view is okay. And they came out a lot better than I thought they would. I I wasn't sure I liked the colour of them before I dried them off and, and pressed them. They seemed a lot more yellow, but they do have a definite brown to them. So I'm super happy with them. And even the stamping. The stamping was showing a lot more vibrant. But now that it's dried, it almost has a, oh, I wouldn't say muted. It's, it's probably showing up clearer in the camera than it is in real life. But I just think it's so pretty. And I love that we did some of the, the secondary stamps as well as the first impression because that just adds extra detail. So I... I've surprised myself at how much I like them. So they are the tea stain. That was just with plain tea stain. And then we tried some colour tea stain. So this is the plain. And again, the tones, the colours are a lot more muted than I thought they would be. When they were wet, they were quite vibrant. And I really wasn't sure how I felt about them. So I'll just grab the paper pad again and show you the comparison of the two. So you can see it's really changed the colour of that rice paper. Sorry if that light is flickering. I've not much I can do about it, unfortunately. But yeah, I just think they've they've come out much prettier than I expected. So I love it when a an idea comes to fruition and actually works because I actually left when I stopped the video, I was feeling a little deflated and I didn't really feel like they had come out quite how I had envisaged, but they really have. So this is the one we stamped with the bird stamp. And again, really soft colours and first stampings as well as secondary stampings and really, really pretty. I'm so excited about these. You have no idea because this isn't something that I saw anybody else do. This was just an idea that popped into my head and I went, oh, I've got blank, blank rice paper. What can I do with it? And this is the one that we did 
all random stamps. So we've got birds and dragonflies and feathers and butterflies and a little filigree stamp. And I actually looked at it after I stamped it and I was like, that is way, way busy. Like, what have you done? But I actually really like it. Who knew? Um, so yes, again, surprised myself because something that I walked away from going, I'm really not sure. I really, really love them. And then this one here is the one that we started with that picked up the orange from my original tea stain paper, which was just my, my background paper for um, blotting, basically. And it's actually really pretty. And I'm not an orange fan. As I've said in previous videos, I had thought that there were certain colours in the colour spectrum that I didn't like until I realised that it depends on the tone of that colour. And this orange tone I love. Absolutely love. And I love the haziness that it's given. So... If you wanted to get the same effect, if you have some of that butcher's paper and spray it with your tea stain, dry it off, and then use that behind, you would probably get something similar. So I hope you enjoyed this little craft with me slash experiment. Um, I've certainly learned a lot from it, and I'm excited that I have more rice paper to play with. So who knows what I'll think of next. Anyway, I hope to see you all soon. Happy crafting, everybody, and thank you again for joining me. Bye for now. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any future videos. I'd love to see you there. Bye for now.